Good evening, and thank you for joining us for this conversation on Pauline Vieira. My name is Dr. Alicia Cosma, and I am the director of IU Cinema, and we're thrilled to have you here with us. Before we begin, it's critical to acknowledge that IU Cinema is built and operates on the unceded ancestral lands of the Mayamaki, Lenape, Badawami, and San Wawa peoples and we offer this land acknowledgement in their honor. This introduction and the following conversation will all feature live captioning. To turn on captions, move your mouse to the toolbar at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Click on live transcript, and then click on show subtitle. If you have any issues accessing live captioning, Please feel free to ask a question or ask for help using the Q&A box, which you can also reach by clicking on the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We're thrilled to have with us this evening, Dr. Terry Francis. Dr. Francis is Associate Professor of Cinematic Arts and Associate Dean of Inclusion and Outreach at the University of Miami School of Communication and the immediate past director of the Black Film Center and Archive here at IU Bloomington. Dr. Francis is also responsible for bringing the Vieira Archival Collection to our campus. So we'll shortly turn to Dr. Francis and her conversation with Dr. Vincent Bouchard. But before that, we have a short message to play from Stefan Vieira, Pauline Vieira's son. Ben écoutez, bonjour, je suis euh, Stéphane Vieira, euh, l'un des fils de Paulin Smolou Vieira. Nous sommes trois dans la famille, hein, voilà, Jacques l'aîné et Célia, ma sœur, et moi-même. Je suis très content de faire cette petite euh, vidéo aujourd'hui pour vous parler un peu euh, des archives de mon père, que nous avons euh, réussi à, à sauver in extremis après euh, 33 ans de, de, de bataille, puisqu'il est mort en 1987, Paulin Smolou Vieira. Et euh, nous avons réussi donc euh, parce que nous avons rencontré des bonnes personnes au bon moment qui nous ont permis de réaliser euh, cette donation des archives à Black Film Center Archives à l'Université d'Indiana. Il a fallu qu'en 2017, on rencontre Rachel Kabar qui m'a expliqué qu'effectivement, il était temps quand même de sauvegarder les archives de Paula. Et elle nous a mis en relation donc, avec euh, Thierry Francis et Vincent Bouchard, que je salue au passage, qui ont joué un rôle déterminant. Euh, cette équipe a été complétée par euh, Amber, l'archiviste, qui a reçu donc, euh, cette année euh, toute la donation à hauteur de 450 kilos euh, de documents euh, écrits, et photographiques et audio de Paula. Le travail minutieux a commencé pour... Euh, justement inventorier le matériel qui pourra être mis à disposition de tous les étudiants du monde entier qui voudront travailler sur le cinéma africain. C'était très important pour notre mère, Myriam Warner Vieira, décédée en 2017, de pouvoir aboutir à la sauvegarde du patrimoine de son époux. Donc, effectivement, il a fallu vraiment mener à bien ce, ce, ce travail alors, nous avons euh, monté une association qui s'appelle PSV Film, qui a été créée en 2012, et euh, dont je salue les membres du bureau euh, qui m'accompagnent euh, tous les jours, et notamment Aïcha Kaba, qui a joué un rôle particulier aussi dans ces transactions de, 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 de nations, puisque parfaitement bilingue, elle a pu nous aider aussi à comprendre euh, le contrat. Alors, les remerciements, c'est bien, mais aujourd'hui, vous allez visionner des films de Paula. Alors, il est important que vous puissiez apprécier ces films. On a fait quand même un travail important. On les a tous sous-titrés en anglais pour que ça soit plus facile pour vous. Et euh, j'espère que vous allez apprécier. N'hésitez pas euh, euh, à euh, faire des thèses de doctorat sur le cinéma africain en ayant accès aujourd'hui aux archives. Ça sera d'autant plus facile pour vous. Et inviter d'autres amis étudiants à et éventuellement euh, euh, découvrir l'œuvre de Paulin. Je ne serai pas long, c'était juste pour vous accompagner et vous souhaiter une excellente projection et remerciant de très très fort euh, Thierry Francis 
euh, une amie maintenant que, qui nous a permis quand même de réaliser euh, de magnifiques choses. Bonne vision, bon visionnage et à très bientôt. See you, bye bye. I love you. Ciao. Stefan. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Terry Francis, and um, I'm going to be talking with Vincent Bouchard, who was um, my buddy in bringing this collection um, to Indiana University. Um, I do, a, I mean, Vincent was the first person I told about it when I was kind of checking my email while I was at the cinema watching a movie. Sorry. And, uh, and then I was super distracted because the email said, are you interested in this, in the Paul and Vieira collection? So then I left and I went to, to try to find where Vincent was to talk to him about it. Um, Vincent is a professor of um, Francophone studies and media. And, um, and it was really fun to work on this with him. We worked on it together for a while and then we worked on it apart for a while. And so um, I guess we're gonna have a celebratory conversation, um, which will eventually be joined by all of you guys that are out there in webinar land. Um, so let's have Vincent. Hello. Hello, bonjour. How are you? I'm good, how are you? So we made it, we made the archives available and are you, congratulations. Whew, congratulations. Um, I think what we could do maybe is I, like we could, like our reminiscing, I think we wanna go over the last few years and we can kind of take people back to the beginning. I really just kind of suddenly remembered that, uh, that I got the email from Rachel about the collection while I was supposed to be watching movies. And of course you are not supposed to have your phone out of your pocket in your hand looking at it. I'm sure an usher immediately shushed me um, when I did that. But that was the moment that I saw this email and I did read it. And, um, and then I immediately emailed you. <laughs> and of course you were in your office. It was Sunday afternoon. Where else would you be? Um, what did you, I don't know, like what were your first thoughts? Like what intrigued you about it? What, where were you with Vieira in the fall of 2017, I guess? So, so Vieira is key in the African film studies. You, you cannot study francophone film without having his book somewhere. And uh, that's impossible to not mention Vieira because he did everything, film producer, film critic, historian, he was everywhere. Specifically, uh, in my research, I was doing research on film reception, uh, um, pedagogical film pro projection in Senegal in 2009. And I learned that Vieira was also uh, uh, um, uh, doing that <laughs> among mm. other things. So mm -hmm. I was looking for archives because I'm working basically from archives and uh, Senegalese archives, I could say are not great in terms of papers or, or film. Uh, the, 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 the preservation is not great. So I was looking for alternative and somebody told me, oh, but you, you should look for, for Paul and Vieira's archives. They are available somewhere. We don't know, there is something, but we don't know where. So Ooh. since 2009, I was trying to have access to that. So I, I tried several possibilities and it came directly to me for you. So it was kind of, wow, so magical. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so you yeah. can imagine how free I, I was and happy to I am to have these archives on campus. I don't have to travel. I don't have to go somewhere else. That's very convenient. <laughs> That's, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, I didn't say in my intro, like, um, this our we met the, that was not the first time that we met we met um when we i guess we started at iu at the same time exactly i feel like i should give this a little background and um it was one of those i don't know like a vice president for something yeah some kind of lunch or whatever 
it was great whoever that put that on and um and then i guess i guess we had a mutual interest in like kind of generally archives and media and you were interested in my jamaica things yes and friends i vincent asked me for my article on jamaica the jamaica film unit he actually read it and i'm using <laughs> it in my classes now bless your heart thank you <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, and I just was like, well, this is a serious person and they're a really nice person. So like, I, you know, so like you still were like the only person I knew who did African film and and I have a much, I don't know, just kind of, uh, well, I, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk bad about it, but that week that I got the email from Professor Gabera and from Georgia, I had, heard about Vieira, I must confess, for the very first time in a tweet. Um, I had seen a tweet by Tambe Obinson, who was tweeting out the that like bootleg of uh, Afrique Chosen. And he's just like, oh, this is so amazing, Paul and Vieira. And I was like, oh, unusual name, okay. And then I think I saw another tweet by Blitz Bazawule talking about the greats. And it was, there were like the familiar greats, Semben, um, Mambeti, and, and this Vieira person. But then when I saw it in the email, I was like, oh, well, look at this. And so there, there was something serendipitous about it. And, um, and so my um, social media time <laughs> met with your, and also poor spectatorship behavior at the IU Cinema, met up with your pre-existing expertise. And then, um, and then we just started figuring out like what to do, like how would it, how would you, like how how would this happen <laughs> and what would it take and how long would it take and what were the steps and i think um the archivist at the time kind of you know helped to explain like you know the different permissions that you need and everything and um but first it, it, we have to precise the size of the archives that's not two that's boxes right. it was uh seven or eight uh, nine uh, big uh, metal uh, um, canteen. Uh, I don't remember the term you use in English. So the, the, the blue canteen. Uh, I remember them because my father had a similar one in his basement. He travel all over the world with a canteen like that. So it's very oh, yeah. solid, but lots of paper. We have more than 10 years of work to, to go through all no, this it's information. True. It's a lot. It's a uh, it's amazing quantity of yeah. information about African cinema, about the collaboration between Senegal and UNESCO and Soviet Union and France. That's a very large quantity of information, but nobody knew at the time, the size, the quantity, nothing. It's a, we, we knew there was something, but it, we, we are discovering more and more things uh, every time we, we are looking at it. Mm -hmm. That's a very large, that's, that's, that's not a small archive, it's a very large. Oh yeah, it's a very large archive. Like I think each one of those um, crates, containers is, it's Thank almost you. like a person, um, <laughs> each one of them. And there were eight. And, you know, I visited um, Stefan's house in Tours and they were, some of them were um, like on the ground, you know, like in the, garage and then I think he and his son climbed up in the attic and some and like very gingerly um, brought them out um you know the, the youth the strength of youth um to do that work but these are photos of when the collection actually arrived this must have been last summer yes. um right yes and um, and like Stefan said in the video, it's roughly 450 kilos altogether. Um, this is, um, uh, that was Amber Burton, the archivist and her two assistants, Dan Hassoun and Marquise Bullock. And, um, and it wonderful is really- Wonderful people, they're doing a wonderful job. I'm, I'm very impressed. So. Yeah, I mean, the speed of this, because on the one hand, it felt like it was taking a long time. Like I felt like, oh, maybe I'm taking too long and whatever. And then, but then it's actually kind of lightning speed from the moment of deciding to work on it or deciding to bring it um, to this moment in the 
I guess summer of 2020. Was it this summer? I mean, last yeah, summer. Yeah, this, this summer. Yes. Seems a long time, but uh, 2021, sorry. Yeah, no, I have no sense of time. <laughs> I look very confused about when everything happened. Um, and I guess because there was that protracted moment. So like in this, uh, November 2019 is when I visited the collection. And then, um, and then, oh, and then I guess COVID happened and then there wasn't any shipping. <laughs> and so it was, every, things were on hold for a while, but that's when we, you know, decided to really work on what, um, to work on the, the paper part of it. Um, but I'm skipping over actually what I think is the real gem of this process, which was the workshop that, um, that you and I envisioned and created and coordinated um, before the collection came to IU. Um, I don't know, what should we say about that? And what, like, what were we thinking to do that? Uh, re retrospectively, I think it was a good idea. Okay. <laughs> uh, it, it was good because- uh, <laughs> You had doubts <laughs> at the no, time. No, 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 but it, it, it was good for two reasons. It was a good way to show for the IU community how important these archives are and, and try to convince the key person. And bringing witness and uh, specialists of the subject well, was very, very good. And it bring us some fresh ideas, fresh uh, uh, view on, on VR, showing how important it was at all level of the uh, cinematic institution. So it was good. But it was very good too to have uh, Stefan VR, his son, his heir, because he was. Uh, uh, definitely impressed by IU. So the ARPS, the auxiliary library facility is amazing, we have to say, we are very good at that. Oh, yeah. IU is amazing uh, uh, at this specific point. And it was a very good way to convince Stefan we are the best place to have, to, to, to keep, to store, mm -hmm. to conserve, to, to make available the archives. And, and that, that's, that's the case. That's uh, that's a reality. So oh, yeah, it was good for, for, for these two reasons. And I think it's important to um, a few years ago the, the archives from the, the first part of the, the main festival film festival in, in Africa were flooded. They don't have any paper archives. We have some of the information in the VR papers. So that's th this type of information. There is lots of things maybe not as valuable, but there is a production document on Sam Ben Usman uh, film. There is uh, 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 um, uh, um, uh, letters uh, uh, about organization, about uh, uh, um, um, professional uh, union, African filmmaker professional union, uh, relation between uh, Viera and some Soviet uh, uh, film festival. There is a lot of data as far uh, all kinds of research. So that's very large. Mm -hmm. Almost every topic uh, about African cinema are touched. So VR died in 1987, but until then, we, we have uh, information for everybody from 1960s or 1950s until the 1980s. So that's that's large. Mm -hmm. That's very lots of people concerned by, by this type of archive. So we need to have them secure. And with Amber Bertin, we are sure that secure. She is a full professional. They, nothing will happen. Alf is a perfect place to, to store them. So now we need to work to make them available. And that's uh, our new goal. And that's, there's still lots of work to, to mm -hmm. open the archives to the public. The next step will be to make them available digital. That's part of the, of the project. That's very important to us because we want researchers to be able to have access to part of it, not all of it, it won't be possible, but to part of it from different places in the world. So it would be very important, for example, to have a, a, a possibility to have access to some of it in Dakar University, because there is people, there is students, there is researcher doing research on African cinema there. And I think that would be a good way to give access to, to, to the archives. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the project. We, we still have a lot to do, but uh, the first step is completed. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, no, the first step is completed. I mean, I was just thinking about, 
I mean, I guess I have a different relationship. I'm not a specialist in African cinema. So my connection to Pauline Vieira is almost entirely through this project. And um, and his, so I had to kind of find my way in, you know, and figure, figure out how to talk about his work um, and, and really how to fall in love with it. Because I think to take something from um, just, you know, from, from idea, from nothing to those photos that we saw of, um, you know, of Amber and, and everyone kind of, you know, actually working on stuff. And you told me today that the, there's a finding aid available, which, I mean, just blew my glasses off. I was really surprised and, uh, well, no, I'm not surprised actually. <laughs> I am not surprised in any way because Amber is on the case. Um, but I'm, but I'm just delighted because, um, you know, for me, you know, Paul and Vieira is the kind of multi-hyphenate, which you see a lot in Black diaspora work. Um, you know, if it's it, it's writer, director, producer, and star, you know, it's like no one does just one job. And what struck me about uh, Vieira is that he was an administrator, and it really touched my heart. The way there's something about administrative work um, being, on the one hand, like really mundane and bureaucratic, but also creative. It forms the background and the backbone of really great things happening, but somebody has to like sign the documents and make sure the forms are okay. And um, and the fact that in a way, although as you say, he's central to African cinema, um, but also in a way, it seemed to me that he was also lost to African cinema um, because of the, um, the semi-absence, it's not a full absence, but the, um, you know, let's say the, um, just outside the doorness of his, his archives and his papers. Um, but there is also, it seemed to me, because he's an historian and he is looking at the work of others, and then as a producer and an administrator, he's allowing other people's work to happen. So he's not putting himself out front. Do you know what I mean? He's not like that. He's not that guy. And I just really, I don't know. I think that just really, that part of his career spoke to me that this is someone that you almost have to rescue from his own productivity so that we can see his contributions, you know, as an artist, as a creative and an intellectual. Um, and then I just, you know, um, I, you know, in the fall, I always teach a Spike Lee class. I think this fall is the first, or I guess it's spring now. Um, I wasn't teaching this fall. And that was the first time in maybe 20 years I wasn't teaching a Spike Lee class. So I miss my um, ironic, um, quirky <laughs> um, basketball playing um, art person. But I, I guess I just resonated with something of the, um, I don't know if it's irony, but a kind of self-awareness maybe um, in his films. And so I guess I wanna maybe, I don't know, I'm kind of curious to hear you, like if, what you think about Vieira as a filmmaker and what you see in him in terms of style and stuff. Uh, that's a very large question, but I would like to go yeah. back a little bit on what you said, and uh, we're mm -hmm. still discovering aspect of, of, of his legacy. Right. So, for example, uh, um, I'm, I'm having more a better view on uh, the size of his generosity. He was helping others all, all the time uh, to, 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 to start a career as a filmmaker, to, to get a training as a technician, to find some forms of sort of film, to make a film, to and there's uh, tons of letters from young filmmakers writing him, even in 1987 when he was not retired, but kind of outside of the mm -hmm. Senegalese institution. And he, he, he was still trying to help, trying to, 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 to get away. He was um, welcoming any project. He was, we, we, need, we have to try. He, he, um, he, the, the way I, I would formulate his view on film right now, we, he was trying to, to create an African view on cinema. He was trying to mm -hmm. um, um, uh, give uh, um, the, the right of speech to African on, on the cinema, on, on a colonial apparatus that cinema was used 
for, for colonial purposes and uh, the representation are where or are still uh, 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 um, um, problematic at uh, different levels. There is misrepresentation, there is misperception, there is a, a lot of problem co coming from uh, uh, all the, 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 yeah, the, the racism, the, 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 the way uh, African people, colonial subjects were represented in film. So it, what his goal was to, to, to uh, counter that by speech, saying that's a problem, but also making new images. And he right. mm -hmm. wasn't seeing that as I will make the new images. We will collectively, right. we will probe. And the diversity is a better. And um, he was key in uh, Sam Ben's career. He was key in Mambeti's career um, because he thought, and they have a very different uh, aesthetic, three of them. Uh, mm -hmm. But he wasn't fighting for a specific aesthetic. He was fighting for a diverse aesthetic, post-colonial, mm -hmm. uh, contradicting the, the, the colonial terms, but uh, with a great diversity. And that's very generous of him. So that's something uh, I want to stress. But I don't remember your um, question. Uh, yes, uh, uh, <laughs> aesthetic. It was. It's difficult mm. to, to know exactly what was uh, Poland's project. First, because he died too young. Uh -huh. it, it, it was uh, at the end of the, his administrative career. He was kind of forced by the, the new government in Senegal to, to retire. So he decided to, to for, for, for the living to, to become a, a university professor. It's not a bad choice. So it, his last job was a teacher and there's a, a traces of him, him teaching and very generous with, with his students, et cetera, et cetera. But he, he has also lots of projects. There's um, uh, maybe 10 project, film project in the archives. He, he wasn't able to film because he was not finding the funding because mm -hmm. of lack of time for, for several reasons. But we, we don't have the full view on his uh, uh, artwork because he, he died too young. So. Right. But what we have, uh, the early part, uh, that was uh, very formatted by the condition of the, the, the condition of production. So it was difficult times. There were no money. So it was difficult to find mm -hmm. film, and he, he was doing so many things at the same time. He was the head of the uh, news real production. He was uh, uh, um, in charge of representing Senegal in international meeting with UNESCO, with uh, uh, foreign countries, with Cuba, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So he was striving all the time. There is a, a very interesting story from Stefan saying, uh, "My father used to 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 bring us uh, to school, and he used to to fall asleep at the red light because he was uh, jet lag." It, 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 the question, uh, looking at the archive, looking at all the activities, is when he was sleeping. He mm -hmm. was doing a, a day job, administrative day job. He was filming at the same time. He was uh, doing the editing, sometimes doing the editing in France. He was writing uh, uh, two or three uh, books, uh, uh, film critics. Uh, no, he, he was doing a lot. So that's that's very impressive. Mm -hmm. but, uh, um, so the, the, the point is, uh, it's difficult to assess exactly uh, um, um, uh, his personal aesthetic con considering all of this, this element. But there is uh, 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 several aspects which uh, emerge from that. So the first one is uh, the post-colonial aesthetic, the post-colonial view. The mm -hmm. idea to present a new vision of cinema, no new understanding of cinema, new a uh, new way to understand the camera, the, the sound recording, the, the editing. The, uh, if you look in um, uh, Afrique sur scène, there is from very weird uh, point of view uh, when they're filming the uh, Eiffel Tower from a very weird point of view, or a very weird use of uh, what we call in French the Nuit Américaine, the, the uh, day for night. Uh, um, so it's, it's reusing classical uh, stylistic form mm -hmm but in a different way for different uh, narrative purposes. Mm -hmm. is also um, 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 using, uh, putting uh, 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 all kinds of technologies, sound recording, image recording technologies in, in this movie and showing how it's modifying the vernacular culture. For example, in Lamp, in the, the, the movie about wrestling, there is uh, the moment when there is a griot, the, the female griot singing and uh, they're not singing 
uh, among the crowd. So they are singing a microphone and we are following the sound through the, the, the amplifiers, through the, the radio broadcasting, etc. And it's showing how the, 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 the tradition in Senegal is remediated in uh, 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 these different uh, uh, um, uh, artifacts. So that's, he, he's, he's very aware of that, of this dimension of the necessity to adapt the, the, the local culture to the new uh, paradigm, to, to the new uh, technical uh, needs, to the mm -hmm. new media, et cetera. And he's uh, working a lot uh, with that. Yeah. Um, another point very important in my uh, sense is uh, Vera was, um, in the, the in between guy, so the, 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 the key person helping others to make movies, but also looking for a compromise between the former coloni colonizer and uh, 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 the, the, the Senegalese intellectual, uh, between uh, um, more activist people like uh, Semben and more Marxist and uh, uh, more maybe more aggressive. He was looking more for a compromise, and that's a very interesting figure, I think. And uh, that's a figure very interesting for, for our time now. We, we need more, more people like that uh, go, go between and trying to help uh, the conversation between the, the, the two sides, if you see mm. what I mean. And mm. again, that's something we, we could learn, and that's uh, an element we could learn more yeah. uh, even, even now. You know, actually, um, I I have a couple of just, I don't know, maybe kind of technical questions about some of these films, but I just want to say a word about what you just inspired in me is one, one of the traits that strikes me about his films, or maybe it's a theme, is that there is this sense of um, being in, in, in between places. You know, like he's like the characters are. Um, well, the well, I don't know the actors and the characters that they're playing seem to be self-awarely navigating this place, maybe between theater and um, cinema, as they as people try as the as all of them as artists try to find a new a new form, as you say, like a decolonized cinema. Um, and they're and one of the things that they're working through has to be like an ethnographic cinema and the sense of being always gazed upon. So there's there's a I I always got this sense that like in Lamb I think in particular, but maybe also the one about um, the one about the the father who's trying to marry his daughter off to some some he doesn't seem like a terrible guy but just someone she does not want <laughs> and, um, it, and it, it, yeah it's uh, very slapstick it's very. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, exaggerated, definitely. Yeah, because I think the dad looks about fifteen and has like a beard. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, they are all actors. They, they uh, dancers. They are dancer from the, oh, the, okay. the national ballet. So that's why they are all moving like uh, on a stage, and it's very very funny. There is a kind of a burlesque aspect. Yeah, yeah. I, I there's something about that that just surprised me, and that and that was kind of delightful and funny because of in the sense of trying to like find something new and play with what you have and you know what I mean like yeah. that kind of irony it was just really um like very cool to see and then um well okay I have a mo mo many more complicated aesthetic questions but but just kind of like to orient um our viewers like if folks have seen the movies or they're gonna see them um, maybe tonight or tomorrow. Um, the, the first one, Af Afrique sur Seine, wh why is this film being made in Paris? Like, I mean, I think part of it is um, Paul M was a student there, right? He was the first, correct me if I'm wrong, the first, because these are things that I learned from you that I am trying to learn to say, to remember and say back. From, from what we know, he was the first African student at the IDEC, at the, now so the famous, the, the Parisian film school. Yeah. So why it's... Paris? Uh, because they, they weren't allowed to film in the colonies because of the uh, Décret de, de Laval. So there is some images from, uh, uh, I think it's from, uh, 
if I recall, so I don't remember exactly. Um, we have the information just mm -hmm. for that. Uh, uh, um, and, but it was shot by the French uh, filmmaker, so it's because African uh, um, not okay. filmmaker because they were no African right. filmmaker, but African were not allowed to film any images in the colonies for, for propaganda reason for in order to control the message. So it was that's logical. Co co colonization was a system of power, so that there is a logic, there. but it was uh, impossible for for, for Af African people to make movies for, for this reason. Mm -hmm. So their reaction was, okay, let's make a movie in Paris and showing our life, our dreams, our point of view on cinema in Paris. And that's why this movie is so interesting because uh, they are showing something not visible, not, uh, uh, um, we are not used to at the time. And uh, they are starting something, they are starting a process we, we, we call now African cinema. They, yeah. they were part of the, this process at the beginning. So that's why this movie is so important. But also it's a French movie. It's so influential. It's, it, it, since it was new, it was new form, new aesthetic form, new stylistic form. It influenced all the filmmakers who, who saw the movie at the time. So it's, that's what's very interesting, what uh, very, very um, um, innovative about this movie and the, the process. And it was the beginning. So. Yeah, the, this is all. that great photograph of the African. Madusa. Uh, um, Caristan and uh, Paula. Mm -hmm. I think the only person missing might be Mamadou. Um, is Sar her last name? I can't believe I'm um, his co director, co writer on Afrique Chosen. And then she's um, she co wrote or was the director of production or photography on another film. This is the, um, the co star of um, Black Orpheus who was apparently in in Paris at the time. And that 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 all those years ago when I saw the Tambay's uh, tweet, um, the one face that I recognized and that stood out to me was hers and wondering, oh, I didn't know she was in Paris and like, what is she doing in this African film? And it turns out she's like, you know, part of this entire um, collective. But you know, what you're saying really underscores something that I think is so important, um, which is that this group that we're looking at, these are pioneers of cinema. They're experimenting with the form, finding a way out of the language that they've inherited. And that's what filmmaking is all about. Like we kind of sometimes come to this material like assuming that um you know the work is ready made um or the skills are already well it's not really about skills but like that this the aesthetic is just kind of there and universally the one but all of that has to be tried out what do we do with sound what do we do with time how do we represent place how do you represent moving from one place to place um and um and how do, what do you do with the genres you know and frameworks that you've inherited this um i'm just so impressed by the spirit of experimentation across these works across all of the short films that are in uh that are in our program and um and the way that i think our viewing them as experimental films really honors uh viera and his um collaborators as you know as real as real pioneers of film not only by existing at a certain period of, of time right it's it's not really about first although that is really important um like the heritage is important but i think it's i don't know i think it's just really appreciating um uh his um appreciating the, the spirit of innovation i think and creativity at the same time, it was um, the mean of production were determining a lot of the aesthetic. For example, yes, of course. Um, yeah. It was impossible to record the sound, uh, synchronize sound uh, uh, outside. They, they didn't add the, 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 the mm -hmm. equipment at the time. Uh, uh, so the film development, they had to send the, the, the film to France to be developed. So it was impossible to see exactly which kind of image was filmed to 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 uh, to have a continuity 
it asks a, a very strong uh, technical uh, uh, um, um, skills to to, yeah. be able to make movie blind, to not be able to see yes. the image. That's right. impossible to imagine. Ask any uh, a photo director to do that. They would, that's crazy. That's yeah, not possible. You can. That's that's so you need lots of imagination, and at the, at the same time, you need very strong technical skills because you don't have a right. chance. So you, if you miss, that's that's the end, and you don't have much budget. So if uh, that's not works, that's the end of the, the project. So. Uh, I'm very impressed knowing what Same. you need to do to film in 16 or 35 millimeter in a black and white or in color and the condition in which they were working. That's amazing. That's very amazing. And how um, innovative they were in terms of sound. Not yes. only yeah, but uh, look at Semben, the way you use uh, mm -hmm. the commentary in La Noire de, uh, in Brown oh, Charette. Right to uh, mask the fact there is no uh, direct sound. So he's, he's uh, pro producing something new uh, coming from uh, the difficulty of, of shooting. So that's, that's very, that's amazing. That's uh, why this movie are so great because uh, they were kind of forced to improvise. They were kind of forced to create something new. Yeah. And mm. In a way, restrictively, we could say, that it was a chance because it was a good way to distance themselves from the, the Western production. It has to be yeah. completely different from Hollywood. It couldn't be like uh, any French movie. That's it. They, they were forced to do something completely right, different. Right, right. So uh, there, is, there is no link between this movie and the Caité Française. There is no link between uh, 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 Hollywood uh, uh, crime or or musical and 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 la noire de ou, ou, or, or lamp, of course, of course. Mm. But it, it, that's why they are interesting. That's why they are pro offering a new view on on film and cinema, and mm. uh, why they are offering lots of possibilities. Yeah, possibilities of analysis, po possibilities of engagement. I think they require a particular kind of spectatorship in terms of what we you know, bring to watching these movies. Um, I was really impressed just watching them again today, just um, almost casually as though they were just easily available, which of course they're not. I mean, we, you know, we owe a lot, I think, to Stefan. I think first to Mrs. Vier. I, I'm really impressed with, um, and I'm, I'm speaking of the, you know, the, the poet um, Miriam um, uh, Warner, who was um, uh, Paul and Vieira's wife, and really made those initial steps to collect and um, begin to preserve her husband's materials, which was then carried on by, um, you know, by Stefan and his siblings. And there is something, I think, really, um, I mean, you talk about family archives, you know, like, and, and that, you um, you know, Maya Kate's, you know, just talks about and, um, but Maya Kate is the founder of an of a really interesting kind of streaming registry called Black Film Archive, and um, and she talks about archiving as family practice and her engagement with the actors in as a form of kinship remembrance. It's really beautiful, the way that she talks about this, and um, I think. The, for us working on this, like it felt kind of like joining a family project. Um, I think we both have really benefited from the warmth of Stefan Vieira in particular, and his entire family is really just lovely. <laughs> and, you know, I, when I was visiting to look at this, I was so sick for like half of the time I was there. And, um, and he was like taking me to the doctor. <laughs> stuff to um to I don't know bring me back to life it was really um you know very caring and I think so anyway bringing us into that project I think really um made for me the Black Film Center archive into this kind of instrument of like a caring practice um a family memorial practice and a sacred practice um, although bus, bus, trist, buttressed with all these like, um, you know, kind of administrative forms that, that took on, um, you know, deeper, a deeper importance. But one of the important actions that Stefan took was to begin to restore these films 
and um, and to bring them back into public consciousness. Making them available, uh, yes. Yeah, making them available through FESPACO, which you mentioned before, the very important festival in, Bur in uh, Burkina Faso, in, uh, yes, Burkina in Burkina Faso. Faso. And can, um, I, LAM uh, screened at CAN, and of course now they're available through the New York Film Festival on a, a seven, part uh, DVD collection and and we're streaming, you know, just a part of Vieira's legacy in the short film program, there's more to look at. And then, as you said, that there are these unproduced films and that's the magic of the archive, the unmade, <laughs> the unfinished work, um, the Vieira that might've been that we can now explore um, in a different way. And you alluded to this earlier, but I would love to just, um, cause I guess we haven't really spoken since you've been actually been able to access the papers. And I'd love to hear about your favorites or what's intrigued you out of these um, papers as you and um, Amber have been over there in the ALF that, that you can tell us about. You may want to keep some things to yourself, but maybe just one or two little special. Uh, two, uh, there's, there's plenty. There's, of course, uh, the, the non-published manuscript about these two uh, major books, one of uh, history of cinema. So the first one is until 1972, and we have um, uh, uh, more pages about uh, the, the African cinema from 1972 to 1982. So that's uh, major. We have to publish that, so we are working on that. Oh, There's the same thing on Semben Usman. So uh, um, uh, Fiara published the first book on Semben, and he, he, he wrote a second volume for, for the, the, the 70s. So that's also very interesting. We, we are working to merge them together and to publish a critical edition of that. A lot of work, but very interesting. Um, um, very interesting papers I never heard of. Uh, Vera um, um, kind of defending the need for, for propaganda in Senegal to, to, to mm. con, uh, contradict the, the, the propaganda from the colonial uh, uh, point of view. So, uh, uh, all the, the Hollywoodian point of view, saying we need to broadcast specific images coming from Africa, showing a new reality, a new point of view on the reality and very articulated, not only making films, but also making the film available, uh, sending uh, uh, um, 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 cinema van in a, a small area to broadcast this film, uh, providing very precise in, on every step on different uh, elements uh, in terms of production, distribution, exhibition, so very, very, very concrete. Mm -hmm. um, point of view on African studies, that the fact um, 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 we, the more, again, more diversity is very important for VR. So uh, we, we need uh, African people working on that. We need uh, European people working on that. We, we need uh, American people, white American, black, African American working on that. And uh, so the diversity is key for it. So that's mm -hmm. something very interesting about uh, his view on film, but not only on, on the post-colonial mm. time. And there's uh, lots of elements we, we, we can learn about that. Mm. You know, um, one, of, um, uh, one of my, there are two things that I remember about, you know, rifling through these papers um, it, before they came. And one was the, um, the amount of correspondence, like just his personal letter. Well, some were personal letters, some were, um, appeared to be, um, letters to either to and from or about an organization that he had started. Um, I just love people who plan things and who are just always trying to get people into organizations. And so there were these stacks of letters and the other, okay, maybe two more things. Like I loved, um, just seeing some of his personal objects, glasses, cameras, and his typewriter. And I don't know if you remember this like really lovely moment during the, the workshop in 2019, where Stefan talked about hearing his, uh, that click clack of his father's typewriter. And um, it was a moment of such um, tenderness of, um, of respect 
and um, and of his own kind of historiography, like you know that he's aware and writing his father's stories through these kinds of um, small moments that only he would have had that he would be privy to, that he would have access to. Mm -hmm. And um, it was so lovely. I, I think I, you know, the diversity that you're talking about too, I think is really reflected, you know, in that workshop. Because I remember, um, I remember like we reached out to, just like you said, you know, kind of folks that were in, invested in Vieira and in different ways, journalists, librarians, um as scholars I think there was someone from Canada who ended up zooming in and do you remember how like it was like launching a space shuttle that we had this person who was on zoom and now zoom is our like entire life like it seemed so complicated to have this person <laughs> zoom in and, oh my god how quickly life changes um but it was just it was a really good you know just kind of couple of days of just like exploring and we created our own like little cosage around Vieira um and I'm I'm still so proud of that book I think um I think we did a good thing with that book in the sense of making Vieira um just making information about him available yes. in a really um in a bilingual way and then you know it's French and English and um I'm still particularly proud of the innovation of you flip it upside down <laughs> and, it, and it becomes the other language um just because I just think it's a it's all about like just creating and expanding educational opportunity, you know, and um, and I'm really, I don't know. That's another but, step we, we, we want to, to go is to translate some of the Vieira oh, texts yeah. and to make them available in English, but also yeah. to, to have a kind of a textbook to uh, make available with question, with uh, advice to, to be able to teach both uh, Vieira's film but also via texts on African film. So for, for all kinds of teachers, that would be very, very helpful, but uh, we'll need some time and, and funding. Yeah. But. yeah, no, it, it does take time. These things right. unfold over time. It's an amazing reminder of, um, you know, that film history is multitudinous. There are many film histories and that it changes. Um, and the the glory of the archive is that you always got to be ready for a new story um, that will be in the next reel or the next, you know, box of papers. Um, this is the sweet moment when we signed the deed um, after several months um, and a couple languages of just kind of working out um, the con the terms, I guess, of um, of of. Uh, of um of bringing the collection to Bloomington and you know eventually making it available um so that's Stefan in the um looking very French in his scarf um and Dana our translator holding up the Vieira booklet that um that that we made in summer of 2019 Amber uh, the archivist and um, and Cecile Vieira, um, the um, I want to say is she the middle child? Anyway, she's the sister um, of in the family. Um, yeah, I think this is a very um, a really nice moment. Like we we're all kind of really moved by it. It seemed it did not seem at all sad as a virtual experience. It seemed really beautiful and connected and complete. And um, and then all my anxiety dreams started of like I kept dreaming that the um, that the pallets were like in the ocean floating and stuff. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, I don't I don't think they were on a literal ship, but that's what I I was I was just worried and excited that they were coming. Um, and it's a big responsibility for all of us. But the BFCA is a good place and the right place. And um, and I know with Akeen and everyone there, it, it's and you obviously, it's a good, you know, it's the right home, uh, the right home for it. Um, I don't know. I'm really curious. I'm sure you are. Like who all's here? Um, what they see in Vieira? What they might want to bring to this conversation? Um, there's, I don't know, there's so much to say and to wonder about because we're at the beginning. 
And I, that's a great segue. Thank you, Terry. We have a lot of questions that mm. were generated from this really interesting discussion. So for those of you who have burning questions and have not yet uh, entered them, please feel free to enter them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And I'll start with what we have so far. Um, so we have a question about one of the films that a viewer has not found confirmation for or clear credits and is wondering about uh, if either of you happen to know whose voice it is in the voiceover narration in Afrikik Sir Sam. And are there materials in the VR archive that might contribute to answering this question? Mm. Oh, but you know what? I was, I was actually going to ask Vincent because it says commentary by Paul and Vieira. And so I was like, ooh, is that Mr. Vieira's voice? It is not his voice. Yeah, I didn't see It's not his voice. We don't know. Mm -hmm. And there's, um, it, it's a difficult movie because it was not well preserved. So uh, there is a restoration. I'm not sure about this version. Just uh, I remember another version, so I will I will look at it more, more carefully. Yeah. But this version is maybe the best we have now, and we, we don't know exactly whose voice it is. We, we don't have much information, and there is very few traces of the production of this movie in the archive because that's uh, one of the oldest movie. Uh, mm. Interesting. Yeah, we, we, I saw. Yeah, I saw that Med Hondo was the was the voice of um, uh, I don't know, is the one in color. Oh, Mull, I think it's the fish, the fisherman one. Yes. Um, yeah, and he used to do. Uh, I feel like I read somewhere that he used to do dubbing, like he would be the African character, <laughs> like and do the voices of dubbed and, um, films. And sometimes there were a difference between the shooting in uh, Senegal and the editing in France because it was not a, a, a possible to travel everybody. For example, for La oh. of Dust, and then we mm -hmm. recorded another female voice than the actress because oh. she was not available. So they, uh, uh, they were working with a very small budget all the time. Mm -hmm. So every possibility is, uh, everything is possible. Yeah, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you our, for that question. Our next question comes from Claire, and she is hoping that Vincent, you and Terry could speak to the importance of nation building in Vieira's Ooh. films, especially in the films that were included in the shorts program. Mm -hmm. So also we have to thank Claire Pouchereau for translation. She, she helped a lot with the booklet and she, she did an amazing job. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's... Uh, uh, Exactly what we were talking about, the fact we need to decolonize the audiovisual image. And, and it was exactly at the same time Senegal was born. There were no Senegal in 1959, and Senegal was a country after 1960 with uh, Leopold Sadar Senghor as the first president. So it's impossible to imagine uh, what you have to do to create a country. I cannot imagine creating everything from uh, 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 the, the state, uh, the bylaws, uh, the, the constitution, everything. But uh, the, the main thing is, if you create a state, you have a, an empty shelf. You need to bring the people in it. You need to 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 push everybody to 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 believe in this fiction because we 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 know that nation are fiction, and we all believe together in this fiction. We we believe that the U.S. is a country with the constitution, et cetera, et cetera. It was the same thing for Senegal. And mm -hmm. for Vieira, it was very clear that cinema was key to bring people together in this the, 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 the concept of nation. So to, 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 to convince uh, a Serer, Wolof, uh, Tukula, Pearl, to, to think uh, uh, we, we are Senegalese. We, we, we are coming from our family, from our co community, but we are also Senegalese. It means something. Mm. And that's a very interesting question because uh, um, it, uh, cinema was very, very useful, for example, in the US in the 1930s to bring people together. And there's uh, some very interesting papers show, showing how uh, um, uh, John Ford or, or other movies, Hollywoodian movie, were key in uh, uh, constituting a, a American in identity during the World War II. And it one of the important points in, in the uh, winning of the ally. 
didn't work the same way in, in Senegal because of the uh, lack of means of production, but also because that's not the situation, the same situation. And mm. I have to say that film is was not the best way to bring people together compared with soccer, with football. Football was way more efficient. <laughs> <laughs> but still, he did a, a great work convincing people that there is a future to be a Senegalese, to work together. So even if it was not as efficient as thought, it was a very important point. And that's why all these images are important for the Senegalese population right now. That's why we need to uh, help them uh, digitalizing what we have, what we keep, and make them available in Senegal. I think that's very important. Yeah. That's do, we, do we have information about how and where these movies were screened? and? who saw them in Senegal or Paris, France or? So they, they, they were screened in all, ki all kinds of festival. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Africa, in Europe, in Cuba. All oh, right. Yeah. yeah. In all the main festivals. There were lots of African festival in the 60s, 70s, 80s in Europe, mm -hmm. in Belgium, in France, in Italy. We are long list. Yeah. In Senegal, they were screened in uh, the theater until the end of the 80s. There were lots of uh, film theater in Senegal, mm -hmm. and theater were, were very um, um, uh, um, appreciated divertisement. So they were screened. As I said, we have numbers. Mm -hmm. They were also screened through a mobile uh, team uh, mm -hmm. with a um, cinema van traveling the countryside and showing the movie with a live commentator explaining the movie because most of the time the, the commentary is in French. So they were translating the, the commentary at the same time they were explaining uh, basically the, the, the film screening, yeah. uh, uh, um, uh, the images, uh, the, well, what to understand, they were answering the question. So it was a, a, a live, very live moment uh, mm -hmm. and, and very necessary. And But we have no data of that. So. I would love to have some. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Uh, Just to uh, imagine if, that. If you have anything in your in your basement, please contact us. <laughs> <laughs> well, building off of that question and thinking about the development of, of Senegal as a nation state, Kathy asks: uh, several of the films uh, were filmed for government organizations. Is it clear how much artistic freedom Vieira had while he was making them? It's a very good question. We, we don't know. Uh, what I know is Via was very close to Senghor, the first president. They, they were more or less aligned in terms of political view. Of course, being a president from a former colony, newly independent country, very poor country, uh, it, during the Cold War between the, 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 the capitalist world and the, the Soviet world and the French uh, uh, cooperation and everything, it might have been very difficult. Being a public employee during that time, it was difficult. And there is, it's difficult to know exactly what happened, but um, uh, in, in, in the um, late 70s, Viera was the first head of the Senegalese television, but he stayed only two years. And that's the moment when uh, Senghor uh, uh, a drawback and uh, Abdul Diouf became the second president. Abdul Diouf was uh, the, the Senghor's uh, prime minister. And it's interesting, it wasn't, it didn't keep the confidence of the second uh, uh, president. And just after that, he was forced to retire. So I, mm. I, I read it as a kind of, a, okay, he, he was pushed away because he mm -hmm. was not aligned with the new government and it was there's a trust but what was not there anymore um, after that it's difficult to know exactly what was Vias view what was uh, uh, um, the, 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 uh, the way uh, uh, the, the Senegalese government was pushing on or the French cooperation was pushing on or the Soviet uh, point of view on that difficult to but he was definitely very aware of all that and he was uh, in the middle of a, mm -hmm. a complex situation yeah. so. and you know what i would actually connect what you just said back to something you said earlier vincent about 
the conditions of making and the conditions of production um, to just underscore that, you know, artistic freedom maybe is not that free and that there, you know, there are lots of desires that we bring when we talk about filmmakers, especially like when we feel like we're discovering filmmakers. And, um, but, you know, it is a, a craft in a sense of like, you, if, you know, and Esther Figueroa talks about this, a filmmaker who passed through, um, you know, I, I use cinema and she was like, you know, it's, you, if you only have so much wood and <laughs> that's what you can work with. Mm -hmm. um, if, um, if you have to trespass to make your film, then all of a sudden your aesthetic is shooting through fences. You didn't decide that that's going to be your aesthetic, but that's the world you're living in. And so I wonder if, you know, if the way that you were talking about physical, financial, but also maybe political and social constraints, um, constraints of location are also part of how Vieira um, negotiated the images that, you know, that, um, that he created, administrated, made possible, and that, you know, that we are able to see. I think he was a very uh, uh, fair negotiator, very uh, good negotiator. Mm -hmm. one, one example, uh, when uh, Sam Ben wanted to, to make Van Water, he was looking for funding. And of course, the French corporation didn't want to, to provide because he was Nazi, so it was not compatible. Mm -hmm. So he, he worked with the uh, Bureau du Cinéma, the French Bureau du Cinéma, and basically they gave some extra film to uh, um, uh, society providing film for, for, to, for the newsreels and they kind of use this film to make La Noir de. So it, he was always trying to find a way, trying to, to, to find the compromise between people. And, and he, since he was very aware of the different elements, uh, the, the articulation, the, 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 the counter influence, he, he, he was helping the, the, mm -hmm. the the situation and trying to find the solution so yeah uh, i love it P pragmatic solution oriented yeah, very, very very pragmatic definitely mm. well we have several questions um concerning access to the archives um so i'll i'll summarize them uh succinctly um, we have several participants who are wondering if there is a timeline for when the archives will be available online or potentially if we know when researchers will be available to come to IU to work in the collection and actually engage with these bountiful materials. Hmm. So Amber Bertin would be the, the person to answer this question. Mm -hmm. Last time I asked, so last year, she told me maybe summer 2023. Mm -hmm. We need some more funding. We need mm -hmm. to work. We need to we, we finalize the, the first listing, so we know basically what's in the archives. But uh, there is a very huge work of archivization to do before making them public. So mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. yet, but we, we we are working a lot, and apparently we we are very efficient. We are working fast compared with others. So oh yeah, we are doing our best. But yeah. I, I, I have lots of colleagues we are, we are waiting for the archives to be open to the public, and I understand. Well, I will point out that the Black Film Center and Archive has a beautiful new website, and I would encourage everyone who's interested in working in the archives to, to tune into that website regularly to, to look for updates on when access will become available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I, I want to stress the fact that Black Film Center uh, archive is key for this collection, and we we need them. We 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 need them strong. We need them with funding. That's very important for us researchers, not only at, I, at IU, but uh, with this collection, with uh, all the collection available at uh, the Black Film Center. We need a strong center. That's very mm -hmm. important. Yeah, no, it's the center of Black film, isn't it? Yeah. Well. Um, we have lots of comments um, in our Q&A that are not necessarily questions, but are offering kudos for the work that you, Terry, you, Vincent, Amber, and everybody else at the Black Film Center and Archive have done um, in the work in getting this collection here and getting it ready in the truly incredible speed that you have and are continuing to work on. 
um, to get it available to people to see, and especially these films, which are so rare for everyone to be able to access. Um, we have one final question. I think we have time for one more, and it speaks to something, um, a phrase that Terry mentioned earlier in the conversation that kind of is sticking in my brain, this idea that Vieira needed to be rescued from his own productivity. Um, and uh, Kathy is wondering, is it really clear the, the layers of roles that Vieira played in his films? Was he always doing screenwriting and directing and producing and exhibition? Um, how much of a team did he have working with him or not? Or was it really just a, a hustle essentially to get done what he could get done and get that work out there? Oh, no, he was working as a team. He was always working yeah. with lots of people. He was interacting with other writers. He was welcoming any energy, any time, any skills. Mm -hmm. uh, he was able to film, but he was always working with a cameraman. He was able to do the editing, but most of the time he was working with somebody else. So, no, he was collaborating a lot, and it was very important for, for him. And I, I, I don't know him, but from all the different point of view I got, he was very humble. He was very, I, I, I didn't get any bad view on him. Uh, um, um, he, he was getting very well along with Sam Ben, who was exactly the contrary. Sam Ben was a strong artist with uh, a, a, a great temper, with uh, a genius ideas, but uh, uh, Sam Ben was uh, not always very nice, but I don't have the same impression from Vera. Vera was the one bringing people together, working together. And yeah, he was trying to create uh, artworks, but they were more or less collective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I mean, the credits are pretty, I, I, from what I've seen, are very fulsome. And I did, I slightly, I don't, what other word could I use other than rescue? I say, it, I don't, I mean, I don't know if I want to, if I, it feels stronger than what I mean mm -hmm. in terms of that this part, that he needed to be rescued. Um, but certainly to, um, to be um, the spotlighted, mm -hmm. <laughs> the spotlight with, within his, um, within his productivity, which often happens, William Greaves, is a similar in, in terms of a filmmaker who worked for in um, diff various agencies. He made sponsored films and um, was a producer and a teacher and an actor and a writer. Um, and sometimes the the uh, the authorship, the, that individuality of the the person's contribution is is sometimes um, I don't know, just like enmeshed. But you know, Vieira's generosity is. I feel like it's reflected in the, the family. And I mean, a lot of times, I don't know, when, when, you know, with archive work, it is care work and you kind of see different relationships, you know, of how people view their, um, oh, I love this photograph so much. Um, and this is Kathy, um, what's the journalist, Kathy Kummel or something? I can't remember her last name, um, who took this photograph of Viera um, in the editing room, I wanna say in Paris. Um. Uh, in in conversation, yes, you know, always, always yeah, conversation. yeah, a real just be, like even just reading, just seeing his material, it just, he just feels like a teacher and a thinker, um, a really creative and and generous person. It's just been such an honor to be associated with him and and to see all of the other people who have been similarly inspired to protect his legacy and to um to generate new ideas and new work you know out of this um it's really very exciting i'm so glad that I, I, that i got to be involved in this and um and thank you, know, you for being involved with this yeah i well i was gonna uh, actually you know shout out amber one more time um, I mean, it started with, um, with Ron, you know, Rhonda Seawall was the archivist at the time who like initially explains like what one does and, you know, you need to get space at ALF and everything. Um, and then, um, and then Amber started during just 
in, I think, April during the lockdown. And this was our lockdown project. There was, you know, it was, a, it was an interesting turn in a way from kind of like public programming to thinking, well, 50 years from now, <laughs> 100 years from now, um, there need to be Vieira books. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what shaped um, the priorities, you know, that, sh that she and I decided on, I think, in those those early days of lockdown and um, and along with some other kind of introspective projects. And um, and so it was nice. It was nice to have something lovely to focus on, mm -hmm. you know, creative to memorialize during I think a very difficult time. Uh, the, the protests brought me some optimism, but then you know, obviously. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and it's nice to see you and be back and to celebrate this and talk about it. Well, I think that's a lovely sentiment to end on the generative nature of this archive and the way that this is really bringing Vieira and African cinema far into the future, right, with a wealth of material and to study and a wealth of new material that will be generated from the tremendous archive that is uh, in process and will soon be available to scholars and cinephiles around the world. So before we, before we end, I just want to extend my thanks again, like everyone else in the audience, to you, Terry, to you, Vincent, to Stefan and the entire Vieira family. There's a tremendous amount of work that went into making this happen. And IU Cinema is really thankful to have played a small role in bringing these materials to the broader public. I'd also like to take a minute to thank the IU Cinema team, specifically Seth and Ava, who are working really hard behind the scenes to make sure that we had this event go off this evening. Um, and like, if you're like me, you are inspired to re-watch or potentially some of you watch for the first time these shorts. They will be available until tomorrow, Friday, February 11th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. You simply need to go to the link go.iu.edu slash Vieira and the link will show up in the Zoom chat as well. And you'll be able to watch the shorts until tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. And for those of you who have already seen it, you absolutely know that they are, they're worth a rewatch. And for those who may not have had a chance to catch them yet, cannot recommend them more. So thanks to you all out there for joining us this evening. A huge thanks again to you, Terry and Vincent. And IU Cinema wishes you all a lovely evening. Thanks again for being with us. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>